And this is the final article, as promised, the Bill Munns Bigfoot Report Exposed. As the debate over the Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot film rages on, I wanted to call attention to a gentleman by the name of Bill Munns who claims that the Bigfoot in the Patterson Gimlin film is a real creature. Mr. Munns is a prosthetic FX artist with tons of experience, or so he would have you believe. A quick look at his IMDb page gave me the information I suspected. He has only had involvement in two B-quality film productions, and that was back in the 1980s. I looked at his supposed creature gallery of his work, as well as his so-called resume on his website, which is obviously inflated. He is giving himself credit for things I doubt he did in reality, or at levels he claims to have done them at. His creature work is very poor and not anywhere near the standard it should be for such film productions as he claims to have been the brain behind. In short, Bill Munns is not what he claims to be and is not the FX genius he would like you to believe that he is. <clears throat> I began to suspect this to be the case when I first gained knowledge of him through a documentary show about Bigfoot where he was digitizing the Paris and Gillen film frame by frame. The film should have been taken to professional celluloid film restoration technicians rather than digitized in the faulty manner Bill Munns used, which simply transferred artifacts and all. Well, now, first of all, and I should have said this in the last video, how do we know he didn't take it to a film restoration technician? How do we know he didn't do that? We don't, now do we? And even if, and what and what would it harm what, what, what harm would there be if he didn't take it to a celluloid film restoration technician? Mr. Munns grew very excited when he seemingly found mouth movement in one frame of the Paris and Gillen film. Anyone versed in old celluloid film deterioration and restoration can easily spot this as a film artifact. This happens in those old okay, I've already read that in the last video. On another note, when different copies of the same film exist, they will exhibit different artifacts in each reel. What might have initially been a shadow can appear to be, okay, yeah, yeah, I already uh, read that in the last one. For Bill Munns to not know this, or to not recognize that this happens, set my alarm bells ringing. It means he is either ignorant of this, in which case he would have to be a fraud, because no one with the experience he claims to have could possibly ignore this fact, or he is deliberately misleading people to try and fit in his theory that Bigfoot exists. Well, you know, again, again, do you know for certain that he didn't go to a restoration uh, technician? No, you don't. And would Bill Munns share that knowledge? And, uh, and here's the thing, does he have to share that knowledge in order to be credible? No, he does not, because it doesn't make any difference. I think he has a little bit of both. I think he is ignorant of old celluloid film artifacts and restoration as well, as he is deliberate in his attempts to make everything fit his theory. The reason I say that is because he does ignore obvious camera magnification settings, which would put the supposed creature at around six feet tall in favor of a theory that another magnification was used, placing the supposed creature at over seven feet tall. This is an obvious attempt to mislead people. Oh, please. All of his assertions about the Patterson Gimlin film subject display that he has no knowledge of suit techniques from the 1960s, which is two decades before he was most active in the 1980s. Uh, well, you know, again, that's wrong. If you read his book, he was working in all kinds of uh, fields in, uh, in and around uh, Hollywood long before the 1980s. He was working on film and the way film he, he was he was working that's the thing. He was working on film. He knew how to uh, change film out of certain types of cameras. There were certain things he knew how to do. You know, and he was studying different makeup techniques. So, nice try, so try again. 
For Bill Moss not being aware of Charlie Gamora and his water bag techniques for ape costumes, which actually date from the 1930s, display that he is not at all a professional. Well, no, I think he is aware, and I think he was aware. I don't know how anyone who claims the knowledge he does could not be aware of this fact. I also see how everything that Bill Munns claims in his argument is directly opposed by other effects professionals in the entertainment industry. And I'm not going to go over it again. I've already told, I've already said, you know, the reasons why they make the claims that they do. I've already, I've already said it, you know, ad nauseum. Every claim Munns makes is directly opposed by award-winning professionals. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I already mentioned, already, you, already, you already heard what I said about that. So the Bigfoot community has been duped by a fraud. Oh, give me a break. They have been lied to by Munns either deliberately to gain attention or through his lack of knowledge of, which, of that which he claims to be a professional at. And here he goes with the Chambers connection. Uh, the, the, Mr. Dark is saying this. Even the domed head which Munns claims indicates that it couldn't be human is false. This is easily achieved by a hair mat turned around backwards, the very hair mat that was commonly used at the time. As for walking gait, when the film was same lines, you can clearly see that footwear is being worn. Really? But those types of clown shoes cause you to walk funny because you have to plant your heel firmly before you take a step or you will trip. John Chambers revolutionized, da 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 blah blah blah. I've already talked about the John Chambers connection, the alleged connection. For Bill Munns to not be aware of any of this shows his lack of knowledge and his unprofessionalism. Bill Munns is a fraud and the liability of the Bigfoot community for giving false and misleading information about the PG film hoax. Bob Gimlin is also a fraud. He deliberately tells lies about his true involvement in the hoax. Well, those are some pretty powerful... Those are some pretty powerful claims. <clears throat> they're unsubstantiated, but they're, but they're powerful. And again, you have no evidence of any of this. You just have nothing. You have nothing but supposition. You have nothing but speculation. You, you, dude, you got nothing. You got nothing. You know, maybe, maybe you know, maybe you should uh, actually look into this stuff a little more thoroughly before you go off making half cock suggestions and half cock statements of what of that which you know nothing about. That way you wouldn't look so foolish like you do right now. So anyway, that is all four parts, as I promised. And this is oh boy, it's a doozy, isn't it? <laughs> I mean this guy he just doesn't seem to understand what's really going on with the PG film. He makes all of these. Um, he makes all of these assertions without one single shred of evidence. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, thanks guys for tuning in, and uh, this concludes this uh, particular video sequence. So y'all be good or be good at it.